we wanted to give you our review on the Love Sack sectional. Our living room has come a long way in our renovation process, and it is finally time to buy our first piece of furniture. But if you've done any research into the Love Sack sectional, you know that there's a lot of decisions to make, and it is a pretty pricey couch. One of the big decisions you have to make is deep seating or standard seating. To get a better feel of how this was going to look, we actually used cardboard cutouts to the exact size of each piece of the couch. Maggie, just testing out my new couch here. There's a TV on that wall. After doing a lot of research, we finally decided what we wanted and went ahead with the order. Now it was just a race against time to get our floor installed in our living room before our couch showed up. The room overall measures 20 foot by 22 foot. The original plan was to get seven seats, but after we did the cardboard cutouts, it didn't seem like enough, and we went ahead and ordered nine, and my husband also insisted on a pillow sack. Our couch arrived pretty quickly after ordering it. I was still a little nervous because this couch was not cheap. But one of the features is free returns for up to 60 days if you aren't happy with it. But I'm not exactly sure how you would rebox everything to return it. We ordered seven standard seats and two storage seats. Looking back on it now, I probably would have ordered one or two more storage seats because they are really nice to put your blankets or toys or anything extra you just want to hide. After we got a couple of the seats removed from the box, we broke down the boxes so they'd be out of the way. And then we realized that the pads for the seat and the pillows for the seat were all in the same box shoved up inside the bottom of the seat. So now it was time to take a break and figure out what the heck we were actually doing. Pull on the seat, each corner to ensure the top is tight. Align the Velcro on the cover on the seat frame. Don't push any Velcro all the way down until you have all four sides aligned. Okay. Insert, well, that's from the seat cover. Okay, well, we need to take this out, right? Like this is something. Of course, we didn't find the answers in the instructions, so now it's back to just trying to figure this out. The problem was there's two poles that were stopping us from removing the cushion, but after struggling a little bit, we were able to remove the poles, and now we just had to remove the cushion and the pillow. I definitely underestimated how tight this cushion was going to be in here. I do not advise trying to get it out on your own, and definitely do not step on the corner of the Velcro with your sock. We also found that the four feet in the clamp were included in this box. And now it was time that we put on the covers. Each cover package came with three covers, one for the pillow, one for the pad, and one for the base. If you are trying to put the couch together by yourself, this is going to be your hardest part. It was definitely easier with two of us to slide these covers on at the same time and be sure all the corners were lined up before we started the Velcro process. And I was actually surprised that this part was really easy. All you have to do is make sure you pull your corners tight and then fold them over and Velcro them. And this is actually one of the main reasons we bought this couch. The covers are easy on and off, and they're machine washable. So if we ever spill anything or our couch seems to be ruined, you can literally slip the cover off and wash it. And then in a few years, if we change our mind what color couch we want, we can do the same and slip the covers off and just buy new covers. The pillows were a tight fit in the pillowcase, so to get them in, you actually had to fold it in half and then cram it in the zipper area before you fluffed it back up. 
Another thing we did was make sure the tags to the pillow were on the bottom, the same side as the zipper. I put my arm inside to be sure we weren't zipping the tags up and then I slowly removed it. It seemed like we were making some progress. And then I realized we were still working on the contents of the first box and we have so many boxes that we have to do. Next up, so we can finish our first box, is to put the cover on the seat cushion. You need a clean, flat surface to lay your cover on. And then you're going to unzip it. Be sure the zipper that's on the bottom of your cushion seat stays facing down. And then you're pretty much just cramming it in here. It felt like we were doing something wrong, but it is what you're supposed to do. You just wanna push it into the two deeper corners first, and then make sure all your seams and all your lines are correct. It almost seems like the cushion is too big for the cover. We found it easiest to fold the cushion in half and cram it into the back two corners. Then make sure everything is exactly how we wanted it before we zip the cover on. We chose to go with the standard fill for our seats. I'm a part of a Facebook group where I read a ton of reviews and it seemed as if the other fill was something you were always going to have to fluff up. And the standard fill, although it might be a little stiff at first, will eventually break in and become the perfect couch. For our fabric, we chose padded velvet in the color taupe. And right out of the bag, when you put these cushion covers on, they are very wrinkly. But over time, the wrinkles will go away. Now that we have all of our seats covered, it's time to move on to the backs. The backs were the easiest part to put together, but the hardest part to pick. We chose to get seven standard backs and three deep seating. It really helped using the cardboard cutout so we could feel which way we wanted to put our couch and know which size back we needed. The standard backs are great for if you're using a movie pit, but if you're gonna use the couch like a traditional couch in any section, I definitely suggest getting a few deep backs. One of the biggest mistakes we made was not adding the feet on the couch as we were making each piece. We had to go back and flip every piece upside down and add the legs. But all in all, I think this couch is worth the money and the hassle of putting it together. We are absolutely in love with our love sack sectional. We were able to move a piece out of the corner so we could add our Christmas tree and then easily put it all back together how we wanted. In the course of six months, we've already rearranged our couch a few times. It's so easy to clamp and unclamp, move pieces from one side to another, and make it extremely functional for your living room. Thanks for watching and following along with our journey. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel.